So welcome to the 2021 Yorton sale. You won't find a thoroughbred sale like this anywhere in the world. Indeed, it was the first place to hold a public auction on private land in this reconditioned, beautiful Victorian model farm just the other side of the Welsh border. I suppose this side of the Welsh border, if you happen to be Welsh. Arno Poirier alongside me. Arno, this is, this is unlike anything we've really seen before. Absolutely. It's, um, it's a, an amazing event, a social event as well. And it's a real mixture between... We are in England, in the middle, in the middle of uh, Ireland and France. And we don't talk about Brexit here because we have French people, we have <laughs> English people, we have Irish people and horses coming from everywhere and maybe going to everywhere. And maybe I have seen some French trainer from French Calent. Ah, yes, C come, come with me because we have a French guy here. I interviewed him in, Fran in, in France and then Nick, you can interview him in, uh, in England. He's the one of the best trainers in France, is uh, Gabriel Linders, and the meilleurs entraîneurs, a young trainer and very successful trainer, especially with those horses. Pourquoi tu viens ici, uh, Gabriel? Parce qu'on sait que c'est un, un élevage de qualité, que les chevaux ont été sélectionnés avant. Donc, uh, on a peu de chevaux, mais de qualité. Donc, on, on aime bien venir là et puis on est bien accueilli. Et le côté international pour un jeune entraîneur, c'est important? Bah oui, oui euh, bah de rencontrer d'autres personnes, des Anglais, potentiellement on peut trouver des propriétaires anglais qui, qui ont envie de venir en France. Enfin, voilà, je trouve plein d'avantages à, à venir ici. Et puis tu peux pratiquer ton anglais d'ailleurs avec Nick qui va te poser des questions. <laughs> well, I'll, try, I'll, try, I'll try and ask the same questions. Um, Gabby, what brings you here to, to Yorton? Attends moi. Why, why, why are you here today? Um, I'm here for finding a, a, a really good horse, a champion. Yeah. And is it important for you to be seen internationally, not just in France? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I like to uh, meet uh, other people, uh, meet uh, other mentality because uh, David Futter uh, have an idea with the horse and he explained to me and I think it's interesting. And the buyer uh, want uh, different like me. Uh, I want uh, maybe race horse and in England you prefer the big horse and all is different and I think it's in interesting for me. And you've had a result from this sale already, haven't you? My result uh, is not too bad. Uh, I, I buy two two horses. Uh, one uh, one good horse. He, he he runs the first time. He he win, and after I, I sell him in England. And the second one uh, is Anne Loralas. She won a big big handicap at at Auteuil. She she win uh, one hundred thousand euros, and she's nice filly. And uh, I have a, his brother with David Futter, and I think he will be a, a group group horse. And I'm happy work with uh, David and everybody. Fantastic, it's great to see you here. Gabriel Lenders, um, rising star amongst the French training ranks. And this is the point really, Arno, about this sale, is that there really is something for everyone because it represents a different trading point. Normally here in the UK and in Ireland, we're selling national hunter horses either as foals or as three-year-olds. So there's that you know, an enormous yawning gap of three years where people have to take so much risk. This gives them an opportunity to trade their horses on, um, and I just think it makes the whole the whole market a bit more buoyant and also gets horses going a little bit earlier. We get maybe get a, a three-year-old program together in this country to rival the one that you have in France. Yes, absolutely. It's an inspiration, in fact, about the, 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 the French system because, as you know, the French school the horses earlier. And uh, the, for the f funny thing is, for the French people, have a three-year-old unbroken at the Derby sale. It would be completely crazy. <laughs> and maybe like the English people to have a, a, a yearling who jumps and a two-year-old who jumps. It, it's crazy, but... Times change, yeah. worlds change. Exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe we have an organizer here. Maybe you can ask him if, uh, uh, when, when he was asked to, to organize with David Futter this uh, crazy event, what did he felt? Ah, this is t this is Tim Kent uh, from Goffs UK, managing director, just behind me. Um, Tim, it is a little bit different. This isn't it. This isn't the the auction ring in in Ireland or in, in, in Doncaster. This is this is private land, private property. All horses sourced by by Dave Futter. Why did you, as a as a public auction house, want to get involved with this? Well, uh, Dave, Dave is um, someone that look, always looking at things in a very different way, and he he's, it's a suggestion that's come up, come to us from from him and his team. He, as you know, has been buying a lot of horses in France, they start the horses a lot earlier there and he, he's very keen to introduce something similar over here and it's a sort of, it, it, it's to try and provide a market for, for younger horses, for both the, pit, the pin hookers and for the, for the race, for the um, trainers to, 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 to buy from here. Yeah? yeah, you're right in that sweet spot, aren't you? Because you've got pin hookers and end users here. There's plenty of trainers around, Alan King, Lucinda Russell, Warren Greatrex, and I've only been walking around five minutes yeah. and then you see people from Ireland, France, Britain sort of trying to get an angle, maybe get ahead of the game. Yeah, and everyone's looking at it in a slightly different way and it's, it's 
as you said, everyone's coming at it from a different angle, and it's, it, it's hopefully that sweet spot that, that people are coming at. And, and you know, the success, success has come out of the sale already. This is only the third sale of, of, of this type, and there's already been fantastic successes both in the sales ring in terms of pin hooking results and, and on the race course. So it's, it's going the right way. It's still in its infancy, but I think it's proven that the, the idea that Dave and his team had, it, it's coming to fruition, so it's fantastic. And it does, the location does help, doesn't it? I mean, it's not the easiest place to find in the world, but once you get here, it is just stunning. It's a stun. It's a stunning place, and every time we come here, they're doing they're doing something else. They're always renovating it. it, it it's a it's a wonderful location. And when when Dave first suggested, it, we wondered how you'd hold a sale here. But when you actually see it, it's it's the the the, the layout, the design. It's fantastic for for a sale, and it's a bit quirky. It's a bit different, um, and the hospitality here is also rather good. So it also helps. Yeah, they, yes, you, you you don't leave here without being extremely well fed and quite well refreshed as well. Tim, thank you very much. Enjoy the day. Good luck. Thank you. I've no doubt we will enjoy the day, Arno. Oh, yeah, we will enjoy the day. It will start at uh, 1 p.m. English time, so 2 heures uh, française. And there is something that we absolutely need to, to say, uh, the question of the VATs. It's a complicated question. So when, uh, because of Brexit, because of the rules, so I, 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 I ask the question. For the French people, pour les Français qui viennent acheter ici, ils vont acheter les chevaux hors TVA. On paye à la frontière, on va payer une TVA en France, mais comme les acheteurs sont des professionnels, ils vont récupérer la TVA en fait en France. The thing is, you buy here with no VAT. No, no When you arrive at the border, you are supposed to pay the VAT, but as you know, at the border, they don't take the card, <laughs> they don't take the credit card. So you will pay, you will have a, you will have a paper. Uh, and if you, Nick, if you buy a horse in here to send him in, uh, to send him in France, uh, <laughs> you can do that. You will pay a VAT, but as the, the, the buyer, is he, if he registers for the VAT in France, he will take it back. Well, Brexit, we know, is a... A, a, an absolute nuisance, but but luckily, luckily we have ways of we have ways of making this work. Um, Lester Futter is right behind me. Uh, Lester is uh, David Futter's son, and he's very much an integral part of the business here at Yorton now, and has been in part responsible for putting this whole sale and whole show on. It just gets bigger and more more spectacular every year. Lester, how are the nerves? Yeah, good. It's uh, we've had a great response. We had good few shows done yesterday and then today as you can see we're absolute flat I've got four cards on the go with three different runs so very busy and it's going well so how many horses have you sourced for this sale we've probably got um, probably nearly half and half homebreds and horses that we bought in and um, throughout between foals and yearlings to have as to sell here as yearlings and two-year-olds and what was what was the thinking behind it originally what was the what was the the concept the, we just wanted to have an idea that in, in this country you either sell them as foals or as three-year-olds and um, for us as trading horses it, it makes a market in between and we, we see in France the horses are going earlier so if we can get them market over here in, in, in England to realise that horses can do a bit, they can loose jump, they can jump, the yearlings jump very well and the two-year-olds jump well and it's just something a bit different that hopefully they can go on and potentially run next year. How's the interest been so far today? Good. The interest, I think, has been very good. Um, it's, we've had a huge amount of people in, and I think the horses are going down well. Good man. Well done. Good Thank luck. you. Lester Futter, um, David's son. It's a, a very much a family affair, this uh, Arno, and, mm -hmm. and it's a, a growing concern all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he explain? And what, for a young point of view, the English people would buy some two-year-old, already half school. What do, we, what do they do in France? What do they do? What do, they, do? They, they will take back the horse, try a little bit at home, Take them a rest and go to and go to run a tree. But the system is different in England. So what do we do? Well, let's let's ask. I think everyone's different. I think some people, the end users, will take these horses home, continue the breaking in process, maybe back off them a little bit, and then bring them back up again next year as three-year-olds if they maybe need a bit more time. An English trainer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I think some of the agents they will just mm. offer these horses again as as three-year-olds at maybe a Derby sale next year, or the or the Dogster um, select sale in in uh, in May. I mean. Take a guy like Will Kinsey here, for example. Oh, uh, Will will be um, looking to buy horses here today, potentially. And then Arno's asking the question, what would you do them? Say you buy a two-year-old from this sale, what would be your game plan? Uh, well, it depends if it's for me or whether it's for, for a client. But, um, you know, I think results have proven that you can buy from here and resell the next year, although Dave probably doesn't want to hear you say that. Um, I, don't think, I don't think he minds at all. I yeah, guess. no, I mean, look, as long as people keep coming back, that's the main thing. But, you know, he's also proven that horses could be bought out of here at two and win at three, you know, for, for, for the buyer. So, um, I mean, we've tended to stick towards buying more yearlings, I suppose, in the past. 
um, and we you know we, we bought one out of here a couple of years ago for 20 grand he made 55 um, this year as a three-year-old so you know that was a good twist for us but you know realistically you can do whatever you want from here it just depends on I suppose, I suppose one of the questions is do you think sales like this will encourage people to start getting on with jumps bred horses earlier so that we would get a proper program of three-year-old hurdles in Britain like the, the program they have in France well I certainly hope so um, I'm fully behind Dave uh, and the idea you know we spent a lot of time out in France and ultimately you know we're doing a lot you know what we do at home is a lot of work with the young horses and I've seen the difference when we've changed our system to doing more, not masses more with them, but doing little and often, you know, coming for three or four weeks, teaching them to jump and whatever. And we've seen the difference. And the horses now, when they go to the sales at, at three, and what might have been a, a backward three-year-old in the past, is next thing it's running as a four-year-old. And that is because of the work it's done. So, yeah, I mean, I think if they could get us some kind of series in this country to encourage you know, running horses younger. That doesn't mean you have to drill them, blast them, whatever. Just, just educate them. And you know, if you look at the results of the French horses, you know, over the previous years at Cheltenham or whatever, you know, the results speak for themselves. Well, you know, unless we kind of join them, then you know, they're obviously doing something right. So, yeah, I'd be fully behind that. Sounds like you're doing something right, Arno. Anyway. Absolutely, and we, we asked the question to Wilkinsley. Maybe we can ask the question to a French owner as well, and not. Uh, and a very nice French trainer, one of the youngest, one of the best, and one of the prettiest. She's called Camille Pelletier. Camille Pelletier, she's the daughter of the famous Philippe Pelletier. And, uh, and she's associated now with, uh, with Camille. She's staying very beside uh, Gabriel, you know, in the west part of France, in Anjou. There is many, 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 many trainers. And, and this lady at the phone. Ah, I know she's at the phone with some French people who works in who works in Ireland, and they are they are picking up, they are choosing <laughs> their horses to buy <laughs> a French guy. So the question is, ah, you have also Etienne Donigny who is here, and this is the French team. Etienne Donigny who is here, who, who trains uh, as well in the middle of the the great era of Anjou. You know, in Anjou there is wine, Nick. Yep. You know, uh, and there is also trainers. And I say hello to Amanda, that everybody knows internationally, and we wait for Camille. <laughs> poor, poor Camille's trying to make a phone call, and she's got this. She's got this man harassing her merciless, mercilessly. He won't leave her alone. Um, and but now she's ready, and she can speak. She. And she's a perfectly fluent English speaker because she spent time in in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Australia. So the question was, Camille. When you, as a French trainer, buying a horse like that, a yearling or a two-year-old, what do you do after? Do you resell it to some other um, clients? Do you, uh, do you raise them at three in a row? What do you do? Yeah, we can sell them again uh, at the owners in France. But uh, at the moment, in France, we walk the two years old and they go back after that in, for holidays. And the whole year will be back for the winter for the first race at three years old. And uh, the later will be back uh, at three, but maybe for one later. So it's, it's different for each horse. And what, for, for your point of view, the best point to buy a horse for the French program, the best point here? Are they, are they have to be to look precocious or supple? We saw them lose jumping. I think yeah, it's a bit different than the English trainer. Like maybe we find smaller horses for run earlier than them. So I'm not looking for big, well, a big two years old. Like I prefer smaller, but then we can run earlier than the big horse. Thank you, Camille. Uh, even if we are abroad in in UK, we, we keep our habits. I just wanted to ask Camille. Just you, you you go to so many sales in in France, and you come here to Yawn today. And I know a lot of these horses were found in in France and Germany. What do you think of the overall quality? I think uh, at this sale uh, we have a good pedigree, so and they look they have with a good good uh, confirmation. So we can find uh, maybe good pedigrees in. I don't know if it's less expensive than in France, but uh, how <laughs> <laughs> we try to find there. Uh, but uh, no, the, it, um, I, I, I come today because uh, the pedigrees are interesting. Good. And uh, will, you, will you be looking for colts or fillies or either both? I, uh, yes, both. I don't. I don't care. I just uh, uh, I, I want just to find a, a race. Also, we have a program in France for the fillies, so it's. 
different. A wealthy program for the Phillies. Yeah, yeah. So we can find a good filly. If, he, if she's good, she could be better than a colt. I mean, so. <laughs> well, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So there, I think there is definitely something for everybody. Here. It's also starting to rain quite hard. Uh, so thank you, Camille. We'll um, we'll just head under cover here, shall we? And as we do, we we'll grab Warren Greatrex here, Warren. leading trainer here in the UK, Cheltenham Festival winning trainer, the only UK based trainer incidentally to win a grade one race at the, at the new Dublin Racing Festival. So um, he's a man who always likes to broaden his international horizons and here at Yorton there's just a slightly different group of horses to what you might find Warren at a, a regular sale. Yeah, yeah, this would be unusual for for us to be coming to look at yearlings and two-year-olds. end user, yeah. Yeah, exactly, you know, stores fair enough. It's a patience thing for me, really, because obviously got to wait a bit longer. But yeah, some lovely horses here. It's a it's it's a great thing to be doing. I think something a bit different. And anyone that comes to Yorton Farm, it's a fabulous place, and uh, you get treated very well. Do you think the mindset amongst trainers, and I've seen a lot of trainers here, is changing insofar as they think that by coming to a sale like this, they can get half a step ahead of the game if they've got the space to keep the horses, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, you know the way you look at store sales and that, you know. The, like this this summer, et cetera, the, the, the stores have made a lot of money. Um, and it, it might just be you, you get them a year earlier or two years earlier. If you've got places to keep them and land to, you know, look after them yourselves, it, you might just be ahead of the game. Are there some pedigrees in here that, that appeal to you for whatever reason? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not, uh, I like just, I, I look at the horse mainly. Um, that would be something that, you know, from when I started, when we had limited budgets, it would always be, be the horse first and uh, some fine horses here there are well good luck um enjoy the afternoon i've no doubt you will <laughs> <laughs> lovely thanks nick i don't know what you mean good uh, warren Gragers and warren we should say warren's uh, wife tessa is a uh, part of high flyer bloodstock who you'll be very familiar with um they've been the the, the predominant agents i suppose in 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 britain and ireland for for several decades now mm. Good. So it's important to see that important people are here. VIPs. All the right people are here, aren't I? I mean, they, they somehow let you and I in, but um, you and me in, I should say. But uh, but yes, the rest of them, very important. And even the famous Nick Lug to comment. And we're going to have a... Honestly, I, I will say this um, <laughs> because I mean it from my heart. Uh, I, I don't need much persuading to come here. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a little mini holiday for me coming up here for a couple of days uh, it's such a beautiful place it's so well run the hospitality is wonderful you see great horses I keep my own horses here uh, and have done for, for many years and uh, Dave Futter my mother bred a, a lovely horse who's doing well now gentleman's game who's by one of Dave Stallion's gentle wave and I have my own little flat mare here as well so you know it's uh, I, I couldn't recommend it highly enough we are very excited, on est très excité que la vente commence. The, the sale is starting at 1 p.m. English time, 2 p.m. Uh, at 2 heures, heure anglaise. Et évidemment, on sera tous en direct avec Nick Luck et, et moi-même, Arnaud Poirier. Très honoré d'être ici à Yorton Farm.